the executive order is a year old and it asked the FTC to look into things. The FTC is a little too busy right now. I know that because I spent about $50,000 on a document for them that I have yet to really receive much reply to that lays out the case and the legal foundation and framework for the actions that they, sh they want to take, that they were talking about taking. So I thought, you know, okay, these guys are going to be busy, right? I know they're going to be busy. What if I spent, you know, thirty to sixty thousand dollars and had a legal scholar in antitrust pretty much put something together on their desk with a little fucking bow that explains exactly what's going on, exactly what the precedent is for dealing with this. Exactly, like what is the precedent when we dealt with this in the past? What are the specific things that are being done that are specifically illegal in specific ways, and why? And what should be done about it? I mean, that, that was a gift with a bow. And what's that Thomas Sowell quote? I'm still trying to think of that Thomas Sowell quote. Ah, yeah, when he contacted somebody from the government in like the 40s or the 50s, and like he said in 2018, and quote, and I quote, to this day, I still, I patiently await their reply. <laughs> but I don't give a shit about the executive order. What I care about is that being fuel for state legislatures to do something. Because many state legislatures are very, um, what's what I'm looking for? They're very risk averse, you know? They don't want to... They're afraid of doing something and preempting federal law and then getting in trouble and then having their electoral prospects for the next session screwed up by the fact that they said or did something they shouldn't. So him doing that, I don't see this in, like, again, I don't expect him to do anything. Don't get me wrong, it would be nice if they did, but I consider that a bonus. I want to use that as fuel so that when a state legislator, legislator asks me, you know, like, for instance, Joel Steckis in Maine asked this, has the attorney general made a comment on this? Instead of saying, duh, or no, I want to be able to say, well, they didn't. But the FTC said that they want states to move on this. And the president made an executive order asking the FTC to do something. And the FTC suggested that local governments do something, which is you. So it kind of gives some wind in their sails, wings, you know, wind under their wings. What's that saying? You are the wind beneath my... You are the wind beneath my wings. I want some wind beneath their wings. So that's what I care about. But yeah, bro, it's a tweet. I don't get excited because Joe Biden tweets, you know? Like, I don't get excited with Trump tweets either. Like, for all I know, he's fucking sitting on the toilet when he's doing that shit. Like, it doesn't really, you know, <laughs> no offense, it just doesn't mean much for me. I mean, I know Trump was toilet tweeted, like, guarantee. I, you know he was taking his shit while doing some of his tweets. Ran out of toilet paper. Was waiting for one of the aides to bring it, because in, in this country, God knows that the, fuck, that the White House probably doesn't have a bidet. Which it should, by the way. It would probably prevent toilet tweeting, because he'd be able to clean immediately rather than having to wait. But I digress. You know that while he was waiting for an aide to bring toilet paper because the stall ran out, you know he was toilet tweeting, 100%. For all I know, Biden was toilet tweeting. Like, it doesn't really mean much. I feel like somebody's just gonna, like, jump out of a van with a giant cane and reel me into it, and I would scream, and nobody would come to my, to my rescue. Oh, well, look, holy shit, there's a car moving. Maybe we have life. Maybe there's a sign of human life over here. What do we got? Look, somebody's open. Looks like a barbershop, but there's nobody inside. Yeah, there's nobody inside. Yeah, there's nobody. There's one person. I imagine it works there. Oh, it could possibly be closed. <sighs> Granite State Minerals. How does anybody make money? I'm very curious. What do people do for money here? I'm trying to figure out what the attraction is, though. I imagine it's something by the water. I also imagine it's when it's warmer outside. Because you got the water right by over there, and there's really beautiful views over there. Master required to enter. I'm in New York City in New Hampshire. Mass required to enter. That's fine if the business wants it. In accordance with the city of Portsmouth and the Portsmouth Health Department. I tend to the wrong side of town. I put it on if the business requests it, but I don't, I don't request or demand them at my own business anymore. Whoa, empty real estate. Yo, look, check it out. It's empty. Empty real estate, check. Mask mandate, check. Things over here are more expensive than every other part of the state, check. Yo, I think I'm in mini New York. I'm serious, go on Zillow right now. Look at the neighborhood I'm in, go to Zillow. Who the hell recommended I come here? This, oh God, I even see the brown paper. Run, run. <laughs> You're probably in a town with Range Rovers and second wives who spend all day shopping or having brunch. That is possibly it. And here's what I'm honestly doing. Here's what I'm looking for. I am trying to figure out what it is that makes a middle class, average, run of the mill home worth $875 to $950,000 in this neighborhood. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So I'm just walking around and trying to figure it out. 
I'm not, I'm not seeing it anywhere, to be honest with you. Okay, you got a bunch of little shops. You got a bunch of little touristy looking shops like this. You have a bunch of little touristy looking shops that are all closed on Monday at 7.30 p.m. Big whoop. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's not like a nasty neighborhood by any stretch of the imagination. I ain't seeing what makes this shit worth 900K. Yeah, but UBS Wealth Management over there. Is that what it is? And a Berkshire Hathaway. Is this just a place that's filled with rich people? Is that what it is? It's like a prestigious thing because your neighbors are rich and you get to be around other rich people. And the way rich people keep poor people out is by everything being expensive. Because if that's what it is, I could get it. Don't get me wrong, it's not for me, but I could still get it. Like, see, you have a UBS over there. That's a UBS. And then right next to it, you have a Berkshire Hathaway. Portsmouth used to be a hipster type town over the last few years and all types of wealth moved in. I'm guessing when you have UBS and Berkshire Hathaway on the same block, that it's probably no longer as much of a hipster town. But I could see how this used to be a hipster town. Like when I walk around here, this really kind of gives me the feeling that this at one point in time was a hipster town. Like you have a store called Marco Polo over there. Like what is that? Marco Polo? This very much so has like a Williamsburg feel to it. If Williamsburg was in a shithole. Or Bushwick in New York City, if again Bushwick was in a shithole. It's kind of like an upscale Williamsburg or, or Bushwick. I take, back what, I take back the shit that I gave Portsmouth. That's beautiful. This is actually beautiful. Wow. Okay, let's take another look at this. This kind of contributes to what I was just saying, right? Where, like, I think this area of the state is really just kind of where all the rich people congregate and make things expensive so poor people don't move in. So before, we had Berkshire Hathaway and UBS. Over here, we have Charles Schwab and TD Ameritrade and Cregan and Nassara Financial Group. Like, with certain parts of Miami, I get it. I'm not saying Miami's for me. But there's, like, beautiful women literally everywhere you look. You know, you walk five steps, you, you bump into a beautiful woman. It's like a 10 out of 10. You have restaurants and nightclubs and all this crap open all night long. You got beautiful views by the, by the coast. South Beach is, be like, amazing. Again, it's probably not the town for me. But I can get the appeal when you say that, like, here's this crappy house that's 875000 bucks. This just seems expensive for the sake of being expensive. It's the Long Island of Boston. Yeah, that's what I get from this. That's what I get. Like when I drove out to Suffolk County, when I drove, drove out to the Hamptons, the Hamptons in Long Island, everything was so super expensive and I'm just walking around going, what makes this so super expensive? You just have all these like little shops that are open for like two or three hours a day selling random vintage used crap. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind if you do that. Just, I don't see what makes the area worth two or three million bucks for a house. I just didn't get it. When I went to Suffolk County, Long Island, it just seemed like it's expensive for the sake of being expensive. You're like you're, the, the benefit is that you're part of an exclusive club, but there's nothing else to it. This is a little bit hipsterishy, but when you walk around Williamsburg at eight or nine o'clock at night, or you walk around Bushwick in New York City, to be clear, it's not for me, but I understand the appeal to someone else. Like, you can hear the house parties going on. If you just stop for a moment and listen, you could look up and you'll hear or, and see house parties going on. There's all this different you know, all these different little cultural things. Whoa, look, this makes me feel homesick. Doesn't this kind of remind you of New York? Look at this, look at that, see? Scaffolding. Now see, if this stays up for the next 10 years, that'll really be like New York City. Got some little scaffolding because they're in progress building something that maybe they'll never finish. Breathe goodness. Ah. The air is nice here. It kind of smells like wood burning. It's a, it's a kind of a Christmassy smell. Look at that. It looks like Woodrow Wilson in there. See that? I'm going to check this place out one more time during the day. Or you know what? Maybe on Friday or Saturday night. I'll check this out on a Friday or Saturday night. But right now... I am going to write this town off as one of two things. A tourist trap or a rich person's club. That's what I think of this neighborhood so far. And it's possible that I'm wrong. It's possible that I'm being judgmental. This just kind of strikes me as like some rich person's club, you know? This seems like the Hamptons in Long Island. But in the New Hampshire version of the Hamptons in Long Island. And there's actually a town right below this called Hampton. So it's like they even copied the naming scheme. In 500 feet, turn boom, right boom. onto Maplewood Avenue. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, oh my god, whoa. 
Yeah, I'm getting major New York vibes here. Now Listen to that road. Boom, 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 boom. No turn on red arrow. No right on red. Oh, there's no left. No right on red? What? This is New York City. Mass mandate, check. Overpriced real estate, check. Empty real estate, check. No right on red! No right on red! How the fuck do I travel 300 miles and end up in New York City? That's the thing, you say there's no trash now, give it a year! Give it three years and this town will have its own AOC. See, but the, admittedly, the part of New Hampshire that I live in though, it's just like, it's too much, you know? Like there's a garbage pail and it has a picture of Joe Biden on it. And I saw the person that put the sticker on it too. Yeah, like you, it, it would be funny if it was a 12 year old kid doing it. It was like a 60 or 70 year old guy with a pickup truck, like putting garbage stickers on the, like Joe Biden garbage stickers on the garbage containers, you know, to make the joke that like, go Joe Biden is garbage. Haha, ha, get it? Like it had his mouth open or something. It was, it was, it was really, really there. So it's like that town is kind of like the opposite. You know? It's got to be something in the middle. Oh, this is hysterical. Check that out. It's a stop sign, but the stop sign is behind another sign so you can't see it. Does anybody see that? That little squiggly sign for the winding road is... you got to be shitting me, bro. That's it. Oh my god, you're run by the same dumbasses that run my state. Why the fuck would you put a stop sign behind another sign so you can only see it at a fucking angle? So you can find people for it! And I've seen all I need to see. This is this is designed the way New York is designed. I know exactly why that stop sign is hiding where it is. It's either A, stupidity, or B, intentional stupidity, so that people don't see the sign, roll past it, and the city can collect money from people who roll past the stop sign. It's one or the other. That's a New York thing to do. That's a trap. Screw your all closed businesses. Screw your $900,000 middle class homes. Screw your speed traps. Screw your local mask mandate. That was fun though. I honestly kind of enjoyed exploring a new place. I spent about an hour in the neighborhood before I started the stream and found the restaurant. But yeah, this is a total money trap. <laughs>